we just got to hear a bit more about the future of CDPR, and this time from the top. The CEO of CD Projekt Red recently gave some interviews as well as a Q&A with investors discussing what is next for the company. We got some clues as to what the first expansion for Cyberpunk 2077 might entail, as well as some details on multiplayer in the future of CDPR. And I also want to talk about some of these buyout rumors that have been popping up as of late. Is CDPR about to be acquired? Because I actually think the CEO gives some pretty concrete or damning evidence one way or another in some of these interviews. But one of the first things discussed is how the CEO believes the sentiment around Cyberpunk 2077 began to shift with the release on next-gen consoles. This happening earlier this year, we got patch 1.5, we got the next-gen version. He almost describes the release on next-gen consoles as the seed that was planted. Where the momentum change began, but it was the release of patch 1.6 and edge runners that really propelled the revival forward, and even surprised some. And he expands on this by saying, we are on a good trajectory to reverse the sentiment around Cyberpunk 2077 and fight for good results in the long term. The key moment will be the release of Phantom Liberty expansion, because there will be a lot of new content in it, and that is always the engine of increased interest. And speaking of Phantom Liberty, he talks quite a bit more about this as well. The question is asked whether or not Phantom Liberty will be comparable in size to the two expansions for The Witcher 3 combined. So if this one Cyberpunk expansion, since it's supposed to be a bit larger, will be the size of two expansions for The Witcher 3, to which the CEO does respond, the structure and character of Phantom Liberty is different than in the case of the additions to The Witcher 3. We'll provide more information about it as part of the add-ons marketing campaign. So this is a pretty interesting quote that does seem to reflect back on some of the other details that have been shared about Phantom Liberty. As little details as there are, we have a couple of pretty interesting clues. We hear how the structure and character will be different. This is translated from Polish, but the character aspect in particular seems relevant. We have also seen Phantom Liberty described as a spy thriller expansion. So it seems like what could be confirmed here is the gameplay format of Phantom Liberty may be a bit different than what was familiar with some of the Witcher expansions and even somewhat with the base game of Cyberpunk 2077. Perhaps the expansion overall will almost be more akin to the Parallel's questline, where we are trying to figure something out. If you haven't played that questline, it is one of the best questlines in Cyberpunk 2077 overall. I won't spoil what happens, but there's even broader and more in-depth mysteries with the game overall stemming from that questline. And although I don't think the questline will continue in the DLC, we actually got pretty concrete confirmation that the questline is largely over. A format of trying to uncover something seems like it could be pretty compelling and pretty fun. And I think what's being alluded to here is the gameplay format of Phantom Liberty may be a bit different than regular Cyberpunk 2077. From the trailer, we can see a ship crashing, the president of the new United States of America, as well as this mysterious Johnny-esque hologram character. I could totally see a plot line where somebody tried to take out the president, and we are tasked with figuring out who or what did it while engaging in some espionage. There's a fair bit of this in Cyberpunk 2077 via some of the gigs. And one of the nice parts about Cyberpunk with how it handles some of these stealth missions is you could really go two major routes. You could go the stealthy route, or oftentimes there is a gun's blade blazing route. It's probably going to be a bit harder, it may be a bit less ideal, but oftentimes you can just kind of blast through everybody or go for a brute force approach or go for a stealthy route. And a lot of times I feel like the game encourages the stealthy route, but the other options are there. So having more stuff like this in the expansion could be pretty cool, as well as a more investigative theme. Two other interesting X factors that could end up being really cool is the expansion adding in a new life path and or a new attribute tree. Imagine you're able to start the game with New Game Plus, which will hopefully be around by then with a new life path as a member of the new United States of America. That could be a pretty cool way to keep things fresh on a subsequent playthrough. As well as in Cyberpunk, there has always been this mysterious sixth attribute tree. This could end up being nothing, but on release, this was just an unlabeled tree. Later on, they added the Relic logo, which is how we have it now. So it could just be representative of the Relic we have in our heads, but also maybe this is a plan for future content. Maybe we actually will get a full additional attribute tree with a whole set of perks. That'd be a really cool way to change up gameplay. Play. Overall, Phantom Liberty is also consistently getting referred to as a large expansion, even mentioned in the past how pricing will reflect its size. So if you're familiar with the Witcher 3 expansions, I would not be shocked for this one to have both more content, but also be a bit more expensive. There are also some questions about a potential Season 2 of Edge Runners, to which the CEO does respond. We are very pleased with the success of Edge Runners. In line with the strategy, we intend to pursue the franchise flywheel concept, and look at the possibility offered by the film and television industry. It is worth adding that having the full rights to the Cyberpunk franchise, we can think about full expansion in the areas of series and movies. As for The Witcher, we do not have the 
their rights to movies and series. So overall, it seems like this is more evidence that season two of Edge Runners is pretty unlikely. We actually just heard from one of the producers of the show how there was never really any plans for a season two, and it doesn't seem like that's likely to happen. But at the same time, I think CDPR makes it very clear here. They have more stories to tell in the cyberpunk universe, and one of the mediums by which they want to tell them are either movies or more shows. Even though we may not be getting a season two of Edge Runners, another Chrono Trigger based anime seems like it could make a ton of sense. I mean, pretty much everybody loves Edge Runners. It seems like it was a success across the board and creating another cyberpunk themed show with the same studio could make a ton of sense. But we also get some comments about the future and the massive changes and growth CDPR is going to be undergoing. They talk a bit about multiplayer. It is not something that they're going to bring to Cyberpunk 2077, but the CEO says multiplayer is planned for most of our next games. And although they don't confirm every single game will have multiplayer, it definitely seems like most of their future titles will. I think both the next AAA Witcher game and the next AAA Cyberpunk game will have multiplayer functionality, and the CEO here actually gives us a bit of a clue as to what that'll look like. They mention how there's two types of work that has to be done with this shift towards multiplayer. One is the technical framework to actually be able to add multiplayer to the games, to which they say Unreal Engine provides a lot of that, but also the actual work. It also means a lot of work on the game itself, its design. We want the multiplayer game to be an extension of the experience of playing in single mode. This is a natural direction. We want players to be able to experience the stories we tell together. And although we are super early on in this, none of the major CDPR titles that will feature multiplayer as a major feature are coming anytime soon. It seems like the Molasses Flood project will have that, but it seems like that's going to be a very different genre than what we're used to with CDPR. But based on this description, it definitely seems like the future plans with multiplayer are going to be an extension of single player. Almost like there'll be single player games first and then have multiplayer also, almost like a co-op mode. Although who knows, we are still very far away from all of this, but either way, this quote, even though it was relatively minor, did get me a bit more hopeful about their implementation of multiplayer going forward. There's also been this huge buyout rumor around CDPR. I've gotten a ton of messages about this, and as far as I can tell, it largely just comes from one highly upvoted Reddit post, which is a screenshot of a random tweet saying that the reason CDPR announced so many future projects is just to boost the stock prices as they hope to be acquired by Sony, as Sony has already showed interest in acquiring them. So basically, some guy tweeted this, someone posted a picture of it on Reddit, and then a bunch of people are like, oh yeah, that's maybe happening. It does seem pretty baseless, but I could see how this discussion has kind of grown as it almost makes sense in a way. CDPR stock has plummeted, it started to come back a little bit as of late, but in general, they are way cheaper than they once were, and Sony almost has this stigma around them where they have to strike back against Microsoft and all the big Microsoft acquisitions that have been happening. And Sony acquiring CDPR would definitely do that. But the CEO also has some pretty interesting comments that I think touch on this. For one, the reason they announced all of those games, we have big ambitions and a lot of work to do, and it is easier to implement plans once they are announced. In order to grow, we must attract the greatest talent and the product plans we outline in the strategy update will certainly strengthen the interest in the CD project group. When it comes to releasing our games, we have intentionally left no dates. Instead, we showed the way we want to go. And this is honestly huge. CDPR is currently at about 1,200 employees, and they describe wanting to grow to over 2,000 employees in just a couple of years' time. In this, they describe how they need about 350 to 500 people to work on a big game. That's probably roughly the size of the CDPR NA studio that they're building, so four or 500 devs just in this new studio that they have to hire now. So the reason they showed their card, showed these big plans, is they want you to work there. But the CEO also explicitly says they want to remain independent. They don't want a dual list on the American Stock Exchange, or not particularly needing the capital that would come from that, and in general, how their growth plans don't actually require further outside investment. They're going to fund this all themselves. We do not need an investor for this. We are averse to blaming others. We want to take it upon ourselves. It gives us a lot of motivation. We are developing CD Projekt ourselves for nearly 30 years. We have come really far. We are aware that the biggest projects are still ahead of us. We also feel that we have everything we need for further development. Two strong brands with global recognition, a talented team, interesting ideas, and capital needed to implement them. So overall, I think the buyout is pretty unlikely, but at the same time, I guess everything does have a price if somebody's willing to pay it. Beyond this, they actually talk a bit more about their mobile plans. They do plan to work with external partners to make mobile games, and largely this is just because they think they'll do a better job at it than CDPR has done themselves. When asked why they shift to hiring external mobile devs rather than just using in-house studios or in-house devs, they do say, from the ever deeper awareness of how different this business is from ours and how difficult. 
We have a company called Spaco in the group, which made a mobile game, The Witcher Monster Slayer. Although their first reviews were very positive, it is difficult to say that it would be a commercial success. So we thought that we would try to find a partner who knows the mobile market as well as we know the RPG market, and we will implement their projects together. And although I'm not particularly excited about the mobile plans from CDPR, the only mobile game I personally play is Raid Shadow Legends, I did also find this response kind of refreshing in a way. CDPR is basically saying, hey, we tried the whole mobile thing. Didn't really work out that well. So now we're just going to hire a bunch of people that probably know it better and we'll focus on making RPGs which we know we're good at. Although of course when you start hiring out external mobile teams you do have to worry a bit more about how much mobilified those games will be with the monetization etc. And lastly they touch a bit on The Witcher. They describe that The Witcher 3 next gen version is still on track to release this year. There's really only a month and a half left before the holidays start so it's kind of getting close and we have no release date on this version of The Witcher. Although at the same time they just kind of announced the Cyberpunk 2077 next-gen version release date the same day it came out, so that isn't inherently odd. As well as when it comes to the Witcher 1 remake, they describe how the technology for this is based off of their next AAA Witcher project with Polaris, which does imply that Polaris, the new Witcher game, will come out before the Witcher 1 remake. So you get a bit of context on the order of these games. All of them are going to be very far away. But at the same time, if you look at CDPR's like plans or schedule right now, it almost seems like they're going to have an absurd amount of content coming out in like four years. Just this year, they started development of a new Witcher game. They have an outside studio that is at the same time beginning development on a Witcher 1 remake. And then next year, they're going to start development of the Cyberpunk sequel. So we very likely could see a situation where we have like a four year span where we get a major release every year from CDPR. We're going to get the Witcher game first, then we'll get the remake the year after that, then the year after that we'll get the Cyberpunk game, and then the year after that we'll get another Witcher game because they said they're going to release three Witcher games in a six year span. So although after the Cyberpunk expansion that'll likely be a bit of a lull, a few years after that we'll probably have a ridiculous amount of content coming from this company. With that said, that was pretty much everything the CEO had to share and talk about with this. If you guys are interested, you can get subscribed and to keep you up to date with all of the things around CDPR and really Cyberpunk and whenever this next gen Witcher version is coming, I'll definitely cover whatever new features come with that. With that said though, as always again, I thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and I hope to see you all next time. Later.